After waiting for over two years and watching the entire Spider-Man fanbase become toxic once again, after predicting that everyone was saying it was going to be Game of the Year four months before its release when the gameplay trailer dropped, Spider-Man 2 is finally here! Oh, let's go! That's close! And yes, this review is a little late, but Stan, damn it, I have something to say, and no one can tell me otherwise. Spider-Man 2 is almost a technical marvel. And while I do have my gripes about the game, some more justifiable than others, I'm not gonna be like every other YouTuber who's reviewed this game and just rant about its problems and flaws for about an hour and a half. But before we get any further, I just have to mention a few things. One, I will be splitting this review into three to five videos. One being about the main game, but the rest of the videos just being for the DLC. Or s DLCs, to be precise. Two, I will be mentioning and bringing up Marvel Spider-Man Remastered to kind of compare the games to each other. And when I get the chance to, I will buy Spider-Man Miles Morales if this video does well, because I do want to review that game as well, but only as a comparison to what, to like what I'm doing to Spider-Man Remastered. And three, I would also like to thank everyone who watched my Spider-Man 2 playthrough live streams here on YouTube. Because it was an actual fun experience, and I hope to do it again when the DLC comes out. And without further ado, let's just dive right into my review on Marvel Spider-Man 2. The game, not compared to those other... Okay, so first things first, the gameplay. To be honest, the gameplay is not that bad. In fact, I think it's more improved upon and more refined than its predecessors in the Marvel's Insomniac Games universe. And sure, there are things missing with the suit powers, suit mods, but kind of don't matter once the Iron Arms, Miles' Venom powers, and the symbiote come to play. But I kind of do miss the web wheel of gadgets and the fact that you could do t two finishers with just one bar of focus, even though there were people complaining about how broken it were. Some gameplay mechanics are borrowed from the previous game, like Miles Morales' Venom Dash and Venom Jump that were taken from that game and put into this one as alternate traversal mechanics for both Spideys, as well as certain air tricks from both games, but there are some new and semi-new gameplay mechanics as well. Which are the options to change the Spider-Man's different abilities from 8 to 10, being Peter's got... 10 different abilities, and Miles gets 4 different new ones. Peter's abilities are the Spider Arm abilities, the Symbiote abilities, and Slash Anti-Venom abilities. Miles has got his original power set, plus the Mr. Negative type power Venom powers, which come to play after the, you know, that one part of the mission. His Venom powers get kind of ripped off from the Solar game, but at least you're able to switch the, the abilities. And I think the best thing in this game is, well, the Mega Ven Venom Blast and the Symbiote Surge for Peter and Miles. Which I'll say, the Symbiote Surge is technically a rage meter that's shown up in the Spider-Man 3 game in Shadow Dimensions. Well, the Venom Blast is just a ripoff of the last game, I guess. It's not bad, but the mechanic is broken as fuck. Being able to wipe out hordes of enemies within 5 to 30 seconds. But with the new mechanics, eh, there's the web wing, slingshot, corner swinging, loop de loops, swinging, and then the web line, tightrope gadget. And switching between spider man of course, a chance to either fight alongside anti I mean, uh, Harry Osborn, before you get the symbiote, Wraith, or Miles. So the web wings are like a secondary style of traversal, but it becomes finicky at times because it is difficult to go up and down. Nevertheless, it's still great to use. Uh, the slingshot is an extension of both the web wings and the web slinging. Whether you use the super slingshot placed around the city or doing a normal slingshot is a great source of traversing the city, speedrunning the game, and as a momentum starter. Speaking of momentum building, we have corner swinging and loop-to-loop -loop swinging. 
They help a lot in when swinging around the city. It's an improvement to the web swinging in Spider-Man Remastered as this mechanic only shows up when you're running on the wall towards a corner of a building. I think the whoop-de-loop swinging is a reference to Spider-Man in Tasm 1 as I think it's the only two pieces of media for Spider-Man that show him doing a loop-de-loop -loop swing while web swinging. Now, the web line tightrope gadget thing has been a must-have for the longest time, and its execution in this game is actually extremely done well. I wish they were able to hang upside down the web line as an actually nail, to put a nail in that coffin. And yes, you can slingshot off the moons as well. And the tag team fighting system is something that occurs when stopping crime. Which has one flaw, you can't fight alongside Peter when playing as Miles. I hope that this gets fixed in the next update or in the DLC. Harry only shows up when you stop crime after rescuing Tombstone in his mission and doesn't show up after you get the symbiote. Thank God that Insomniac did this because, well, no disrespect to Graham Phillips, Harry Osborne's actor, I hated Harry during this part of the game. From the moment he showed up in the minute the beginning of the story to the end of the game this section of the game i hated that's it harry osborne's a great part of this game in the story itself and speaking of the story i'm going to get into that the story has some great elements to it and while i'm not going to resummarize the plot for you like ign i will talk about the important things that happen in the story one important key detail that doesn't show up until Act 2 is the fact that Craven is dying of cancer, and instead of going for treatment, he wants to die by the one thing he loves doing, the thrill of the hunt. So it's kind of the reason why he's in New York in the first place. Makes sense. However, unlike most people, I've kind of noticed that it was mentioned in bits and pieces, little bits and pieces, throughout Act 1. But take this with a grain of salt, I haven't played the game since January 20th, and after that I took a break and then started playing MK11. Yes, I'm broke. Now, the other key detail that's very more important than this one, is the fact that how the symbiote is used in the game. In this game, it's used more like a metaphor, more or less a metaphor for, and a symbol for drug and substance abuse. Basically, it, it makes you think that the user is thinking that they can't live without this, causing them to get addicted to the substance, start acting aggressively towards others who are trying to help them, and mentally losing your mental stability and a perception of reality, and cutting out anyone who they think is holding them back. This is important because of two things. One, the sy as the symbiote is causing Peter to lose himself and become mentally, physically, and emotionally unstable, and Harry losing his life as time passes without him being bonded to the symbiote. And two, as a gameplay mechanic that changes Peter's line, lines of dialogue when you wear any of these four symbiote suits. However, this feature is not included with the anti-venom suit because the game registers it as a non-symbiote suit for this feature to not work. Speaking of suits, this roster for both Peter and Miles' suits, it's okay. Insomnia could have added more that made could have made some of the fans happy, but it is what it is. But I really want to see, in a future update, the Uptown Pride suit and the Aaron Eichmann suit to make the returns. But I'm that that's just going to be something for another video, I guess. Uh, other than the suits, those are really the only two important points I can actually think of in the story, yeah. but to be honest, the side missions were sometimes better than the main story missions. My favorite mi side mission is actually the Haley side mission in the entire game. Final boss eh, is a little challenging, but otherwise it's still one of the best boss fights ever, until the DLC comes out of course. Now with future DLCs for the game is something that I won't get into when they, until they release, 
because I'm planning to make separate videos on them and all the other stuff in the game. But I do wish there was more to talk about instead of harping over the fact that there's other people who've already meant, talked about this game so many times. But I guess my rating has to stay. Still stands for me. Should have things that it should have won. Best performance award of the game of the year, game awards, um, etc. Sometimes. But my rating is an 8.7 out of 10. This video is too long enough. This w video is like been a thousand over two three thousand words i needed a i need a break and edit this video so bad thank you so much for watching i guess bye